Garry Kasparov will not look back on the London leg of the Intel World Chess Grand Prix series with fond memories. In the very first match of the tournament, he was pitted against a silicon monster that devoured him with the minimum of emotion and the maximum publicity. A lethal combination of chess genius software running on Intel's powerful new Pentium processor turned what was widely expected to be a walkover for Kasparov into the world champion's worst nightmare. Since the Pentium Genius is a computer and not a robot, a human operator will read the moves off the screen and then play them out on the board. In game one it seemed as though he was gaining the upper hand. Here he played his pawn to b4, attacking the bishop. Pentium Genius captured on e3, the queen recaptured. And now, if black exchanges queens, Queen takes e3 check, the knight takes e3. This position looks tremendous for white. The immediate threat is to play the rook down to d7, attacking the knight and the pawn on b7. Now, if one of those pawns falls, then that's the end of the game for black. The other thing is that black's bishop on g6 is completely locked out of the game. It's just biting on granite on this pawn on e4. If instead the black queen retreats to c7, then queen c5 just continuing to chase black's queen, trying to force the exchange of queens. And now again, if queen takes c5, b takes c5, and now it's very hard to prevent the rook coming down to d7 with a winning endgame for white. Here Kasparov must have imagined that he had a winning position. but. The Pentium genius came up with a tremendous resource, tactical resource. It played the rook to d8. Now if queen takes queen, then rook takes d1 check, king f2, pawn takes queen, and black is a whole rook up. So Kasparov was forced to exchange rooks, rook takes d8 check, queen takes d8, but now he has no real advantage, because if queen takes pawn, then queen d1 check, bishop f1, and now it's possible for black to take that knight, because if queen b8, then queen c8 defends against the back rank mate. Kasparov played his bishop back to f1 to block the check, but then after b6, the computer really had no problems at all. The position was quite level. The queen came over to c3, attacking the pawn, but then f6, and now the black bishop, which was locked out on g6, is coming back into the game. Bishop c4 check, bishop f7, then came knight to e3, which was possibly a mistake because now the Pentium genius sees the chance to move the queen down into the heart of Kasparov's position, queen to d4. Now it's possible for Kasparov to exchange queens and go into an endgame, but that would leave black slightly better. Instead, he preferred to exchange bishops, king takes f7, and he declined the exchange of queens, queen b3 check king f8, and then he moved his king up to g2. Now, I suppose that Kasparov imagined that this position would just be quite equal, but in fact, the Pentium genius used the strong position of his queen on d4 to great effect here. It played queen to d2 check, and now after king h3, I think that's a blunder, it found the very nice move, queen to e2, attacking the pawn on f3. Now, the obvious way for white to defend that against that is to move the knight. But in that case, there'd be a very nasty check on f1. So Kasparov played the knight back to g2. So now the pawn on f3 is defended by the queen on b3. 
and the check on f1 is blocked by the knight on g2. But now the king on h3 and the knight on g2 are very strangely placed indeed. The computer played the move h5. Now that's, that's an excellent move. That's just cramping the white king. And now the king is looking a little bit uncomfortable stuck out on h3. And black is very active indeed. This queen on e2 tying white to the defense of the pawn on f3 it's looking very dangerous queen e3 now if kasparov can exchange queens then his position will be fine again so then came the queen to c4 so that's keeping the queen very active and just hassling those queenside pawns as well so queen to d2, defending the pawn. Still looks as though Kasparov might be okay. But then came a very powerful move. Queen to e6 check. Now that's just highlighting the rather curious position of white's king on h3. If king h4, then g5 check. King takes h5. And now queen h3 is a lethal check. So instead, Kasparov played his pawn up to g4 to block the check. But now came h takes g4, f takes g4, and now queen to c4. Returning to that square, but this time the e pawn is isolated. So Kasparov moved his queen back to e1 to defend the e pawn. Now, notice his queen on e1 is defending the pawn on b4 and e4. The computer now found a very strong move. Queen b3 check. So that's checking the king and attacking the a pawn. Kasparov moved his knight back into the center of the board, knight to e3. And now we all thought, well, these machines are, are normally very materialistic. It's bound to play queen takes a4 here. But in fact, it found a much stronger move. Pentium Genius found queen to d3. It's now impossible for white to defend the e pawn as the knight on e3 is pinned to the king. So Kasparov played the king to g3, but then after queen takes e4, black was a pawn up and held all the positional trumps. It's that center pawn which is going to win black the game. I think it is fair to say that computers are not great at formulating long-term plans, but are lethal at calculating short-term tactics. This game is a classic example. Kasparov had to win the second game to stay in the tournament. Playing with the black pieces, he outplayed the computer in the middle game, arriving at this position. Now he's a pawn up, and so he should have a technically won game, but it's really not so simple this position, because the Pentium Genius's queen on d7 is very actively placed, and Kasparov's king is just slightly exposed. On the other hand, white's king is very well protected by pawns and the knight. Now, Kasparov has this pawn on the outside, which he'd love to push down the board. But if the pawn comes to b4, then queen d3 check, and then queen takes knight. Instead, he brought the knight back, hoping to give his king a little bit of protection. But that allowed white's knight out into the game. Pentium Genius played knight to e3, just re-centralizing. Then knight to f5. And now the computer found a very strong move indeed. Queen to d3, pinning the black knight against the king. So white now has a clear threat, that is, the pawn coming to g4, winning the black knight. So Kasparov moved his king back to g8, just getting out of the pin. But then came queen d8 check. So the black king is being hassled here. Then king f7, queen d7 check. And now you could see Kasparov getting a bit rattled. He was running short of time and he was having trouble just coping with the activity of white's queen. He played his king up to g6, but then the queen came back to d3. And 
it seemed as as though they were just going around in circles. He played his queen to d4 perhaps rather too quickly. I think he'd imagined that white would play queen takes pawn, but then knight takes e3, f takes e3, queen takes e3 check, and black still has some winning chances here with his extra pawn, although even this would be very difficult. But the Pentium genius came up with a much stronger move. Queen back to b1. Now there are two threats. The first is to play the pawn to g4, as in the previous position. Black knight can't move because it's pinned to the king by the queen on b1. And the other threat is to play knight takes f5, pawn takes f5, and queen takes pawn. And with level material, this position is a dead draw. As soon as the computer operator played the queen back to b1, Kasparov realised the chips were down. There's no way of defending against both threats. In both games, he had stumbled into queen and knight endgames involving a great deal of calculation, exactly the kind of position that computers play well. In classical chess, he might have been able to control the computer's tactics, but in speed chess, where it's necessary to keep whipping out the moves, he just couldn't manage it. Many of Kasparov's opponents are intimidated by his air of invincibility at the board. This was something that the computer failed to perceive. Its nerves of silicon carried it through some tricky situations where others may have cracked. At the end of the game, Kasparov looked like a man about to top himself. Instead, he offered a draw which the computer's human assistant, Ozzy Viner, accepted with glee. Kasparov was out of the tournament, and his chances of winning the overall Grand Prix were but a distant memory. The remaining favourites had fewer problems. New York winner Vladimir Kramnik beat one of the qualifiers from the Lloyds Bank tournament, Utat Adianto from Indonesia, without too much fuss. Vasily Ivanchuk trounced Ralf Orkerson from Sweden, and the winner from Moscow, Vichy Anand, edged out Michael Adams in a match of fluctuating fortunes. Cheers. Oh mamo, mere se zara bhid pani kam, yehi chale karne walo ko yuhi chabate ham, beta daat se na karta baat haat se agar kar.